What is up guys? Back again with another video and today's video I'm going to be doing my second part, part two, to my PID tuning. Now, not all of this stuff I'm about to do is full PID tuning. Um, I consider it PID tuning because uh, some of this stuff does modify the PIDs and how they work. So that's why I'm calling it an advanced PID tuning tutorial. Um, this is stuff that I've learned with working with the KISS software um, and how they, uh, how KISS does things. Um, I found some cool things that you can do in the software to greatly improve uh, how the quad flies for any type of flying, whether it be freestyle or it be uh, racing. Um, and it just really helps you fine tune uh, your setup. So today I'm mainly going to be talking about TPA and custom TPA um, and then I'm also going to go over some little things that aren't so advanced um, but can help some of you guys out with getting certain things set up which is going to be mid command and um, uh, how the air mode which isn't really air mode but how it works in KISS uh, because it is different than how Betaflight takes care of it so I'm going to be going over that and uh, also, I'm recording all of this with my new setup, which is the Sony A6500. Um, and I'm going to try some new stuff to make this a little bit more entertaining for you guys. So hopefully you guys like the video. We're going to hop on over to the KISS GUI and get started. Alright guys, so I have the GUI pulled up. I'm using my uh, Impulse RC Rotor Ride Edition 5-inch setup with the Silk Motors. It's my main go-to freestyle rig. So the settings that you see are this way for this particular rig to get the best freestyle feel. But I'm going to try my best to explain to you guys how to modify these settings in a way to where you guys could set them up for your own rigs regardless of what frame or motor or type of flying that you're doing. Um, so we're going to go and do the uh, GUI right now. So we're going to just go ahead and connect. And here's the main page pulled up and you can see that these are my PIDs right here, my rates. And the only thing that's kind of somewhat out of the ordinary is you'll see that I'm running kind of high eyes. And I've also turned the TPA for D down, um, but left TPA for P up quite a bit. This will uh, make more sense once we actually hop into the uh, TPA settings. So. Um, one of the things I was going to talk to you guys about before we hop into that is how mid throttle and mid command works and a little bit about how the PID controller actually works in KISS. Um, things are different in Betaflight and I don't want to go too much into detail on how that works. But in KISS, it doesn't matter uh, if you use an idle up or if you set mid command to like a thousand or below mid throttle. The PID controller works the same. The only difference is, is when you set mid command higher than mid throttle you have to actually go over that before the pit controller becomes active so as long as you're under mid command and mid throttle is lower than mid command you will not have an active pit controller meaning your sticks will do nothing at zero throttle unless you bump the idle up or go over that mid command setting so by using an idle up that takes you above the mid command it will then make it to where at zero throttle, your idle up keeps makes zero throttle higher than 1045, therefore your PID controller is active. Um, the reason I'm going over this is because this does change a little bit on how the custom TPA works. Um, and it's why I started doing this because I do use an idle up and it was making things to where in order to get oscillations gone and, and um, overshoot gone, I was running PIDs that were so low that I could actually have more P in mid throttle and full throttle, but I couldn't because my rates uh, would cause me to have bounce back at zero throttle flips and rolls. So that is why I started doing this custom TPA. But I'll explain it to you and how you can do it differently if you're using a race rig or something that has uh, slower rates um, or has a very powerful um, uh, power to weight ratio. So. This is the TPA screen, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my radio. Welcome to OpenTX. So with my radio on and it on the right model, you will be able to see that 
That's my idle up switch. So you'll see, right now I'm moving my throttle up and down, but because I have this location of my three-way switch set as an idle cut, it does nothing to my throttle. When I bump it up, it goes to 1035, which is still lower than my mid-command. You'll also see right here that the TPA influence has now gone to 79%. Because of the idle up going higher than 1000, it's going to start influencing the TPA. And when I click up again, this is my actual air mode, as you would call it. Um, but in reality, all this does is it activates the pit controller at zero throttle by bumping the throttle up above 1045. And now the pit controller is fully active. So, um, but you can also see again, it's dropped the TPA influence farther over, which now puts me at 68%. Um, the, without any custom TPA, this is what it looks like. Um, and you can see now that this is what it would be at if you set mid command at like a 1000, uh, so it's always active. Um, you would actually get this full 30%, which is what um, the defaults are. It's also what this defaults to if you use custom TPA, but you don't change any of these settings down here. So at zero throttle, you'll be getting 30%. In my case, though, with my idle up, I'm actually only getting 25% of my influence, which means I technically. If you were not using an idle up before, you would have to bump, you would have to use custom TPA and bump the number up until your idle up position became 30 in order to be able to use the same PID values as you were using before. Now, I use a custom TPA which bumps this way up, and the reason for doing this is, like I said, in mid throttle and full throttle, I could have a lot more P value um, and have a, a tighter feeling quad. Um, but I couldn't do that because when I was at zero throttle, my PIDs were only being reduced by around 26%. And at 26%, it wasn't enough to reduce my PIDs to get rid of bounce back and oscillations out of flips and rolls. So I had to keep raising, lowering P down to get rid of it, which means I was getting losing feel that I could get around this area and through this area. So to fix that, what I've done is cranked P up, or cranked, um, my bad, cranked zero throttle to 100%, which makes it to where when I'm in my idle up, I'm at 68% of the influence, and that greatly reduces my P values. Um, but it also will reduce I and D because these here are percentages. So if I'm at 100, it's going to reduce P value by 0.4%. I believe that's how it works. It's, um, I don't exactly know. But for like, I don't know for sure, but I believe that these are percentages. So um, anyways, at zero throttle, I'm getting 68% reduction of this, which 100% would be 0.4, um, which is 40% reduction in PIDs. So it greatly reduces my P's. Now, these numbers are what I would have had with cus without custom TPA. These are the same numbers I would have had uh, without custom TPA. The difference here is with the P, um, my P values can be much, much higher here because I'm reducing them using this TPA influence, which means at 0%, I'm getting these higher values that I would not have gotten before uh, at 0%. And I'm also getting higher values here as well due to the fact that P is set at a much higher number um, as well. So with this lower, if this number was set lower to get rid of the flips and rolls, uh, oscillations or overshoot at zero throttle, uh, this number would have been lower, which would have made it lower all the way up here as well, because I would still be getting that 100% reduction. Now, some of the trick to doing this is you don't want to reduce I or D at zero throttle nearly as much when using this setup. It's mainly just P you want to remove. Um, so I have turned the percentages for D and I down. Now that does make it to where you have a lot more I at zero throttle and a lot more I um, and D at uh, full throttle, but I feel that it actually makes it f uh, have a much better feel uh, this way. And uh, this is the setup that I use for freestyle and it works great. The other nice thing about doing this is you get rid of some of that bouncy issue when coming into land with your idle up or even if you just set it up to always use um, air mode uh, by setting your mid command uh, below mid throttle 
um, you won't have as much of that bouncing problem when you touch the ground um, or tap into things at zero throttle. So um, that's another reason I really like using this. So now what I'm going to do is talk about how you could uh, use these settings on a really high powered setup that gets a lot of mid throttle oscillations um, and you have to turn your PIDs down not because of bounce back or oscillations at low throttle flips or rolls um, or vibration at full throttle but at mid throttle you're getting a lot of oscillation uh, which is caused by too much P in the mid throttle area which is where your PIDs are at the actual number you set them at so what I mean by that is if you're getting mid throttle oscillations that's because your throttle is in the mid range and in this area you're getting zero percent reduction so when you tune uh, at least when I tune I normally tune by doing zero throttle flips and rolls and on a really high powered setup with lower rates which is what a lot of you guys would be using for racing you will be cranking these P numbers up trying to get a bounce back by the time you get a bounce back out of a flip or a roll you now have way too much P for zero throttle. So the trick to doing that is to actually reduce. You can turn this down to say only 20%. Um, and now you aren't reducing your PIDs nearly as much at zero throttle, which means you can go and dial these in. And you can just keep doing that and keep reducing this and keep cranking your uh, P's up or um, adjusting your P's until you can get rid of those mid throttle oscillations but also start to get a little bit of bounce back in your flips and rolls. Uh, by doing that that's going to give you the most authority at zero throttle, it's going to give you as much as you can have in mid throttle without getting mid throttle oscillations and then the same with uh, your TPA at full throttle. If you feel like you're still getting too much um, like you start getting oscillations at full throttle then you can go over to these settings here and you can start turning these up and then adjusting things to where you again we don't have bounce back out of flips and rolls don't have mid throttle oscillations and don't have full throttle oscillations so that is how you can use the TPA influence to modify in ways to uh, set it up and get the most out of your stick feel without getting any oscillations or any problems like that. So the other thing I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, which isn't really a big big deal and actually can sometimes cause more problems than help and that is the battery influence uh, that's right here and basically what this does is when your battery starts to sag it's going to increase your PIDs um, or go low it will start to increase your PIDs and then a full charge it will decrease them to try to manipulate the PIDs to make it to where it will fly the same on a charge pack versus a dead pack. Um, to really get this to work really really well because of things like high powered motors uh, sagging your battery out really quickly and then that sag coming back you know the voltage coming back in um, it can take a lot of tinkering and messing around with these settings before you get them in an area where they will work for you um, and it's just simply something where um, if you feel like you're getting bounce back on a dead pack, go ahead and reduce the pitch strength on the low end. Um, and if you uh, feel like it has removed too much from the top end of the pack, you can go in and raise this. I recommend, if you want to use this, I definitely recommend turning it on, setting it up for your battery voltage, and then going in and doing your tuning. Um, so hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, it's very technical. It's a lot to talk about. I don't want to make the video way too long for you guys. So I hope this helped you guys out. I hope I gave you guys enough information so you guys can start messing around with this stuff and getting better flying, uh, getting a better flying quad for you. So if this video helped you guys out or if you liked the video, make sure you click like down below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And until next time, have a good time flying and uh, tune in and just have fun flying FPV.